Let us prayerfully sing the first three verses of the hymn numbered 185. 185. first reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 20, reading from verse 10 to verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 20, reading from verse 10. I hear many whispering, terror on every side, denounce him, let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying, Perhaps he will be deceived, then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. But the, war the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord Almighty, you who examine the righteous, Improve the heart and mind. Let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. The word of God. Our gradual hymn is station to modern 166, 166.
be with you. Hear the gospel of Christ according to June, chapter 10, reading at the 31st verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verse 31 to 42. John 10, 31 to 42. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside. What about the one whom the Father set apart as his own and sent him into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy? Because I said I am God's son. Do not believe me unless I do the works of my Father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I in the Father. Again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. Then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. There he stayed, and many people came to him. They said, though John never performed a sign, all that John said about this man was true and in that place many believed Jesus beloved the gospel of Christ. Christ please let us sit I speak in the name of God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit Amen, Amen. my dear Christian friends God put protects his children. God, he protects his children. And when God protects you, no harm can come to you. We have been on this Lenten journey together since Ash Wednesday. And many of us have been connecting each day through our daily Lenten devotions and readings. And as we draw near to the cross, to Good Friday, where we remember our Savior giving his life for us, we read some of the final teachings of Jesus Christ. In today's gospel reading, Jesus draws near to his suffering. And the agony that ultimately expressed his love for all humanity on the cross. The reading from the prophet Jeremiah tells us of some of the persecutions he experienced because of his prophetic ministry. But Jesus, Jesus protects his children. God cares for his own. He built a wall of fire around them so that no harm comes to them despite the many troubles that assail them. Jeremiah writes of the whisperings he heard or the personal denouncement by some he had considered his friends and the fact that the people did not always welcome his message indeed there's nothing it's not strange that jeremiah was called the weeping prophet but the lord remained with jeremiah and he was steadfast and trustworthy to jeremiah and that's what god does for us his children he remains steadfast by our side Sometimes we may be unfaithful, but God is ever faithful. And he keeps to his word concerning his children. And that is what we need to always know and hope and hold on to. One thing we can say with certainty about our life, that you know, human beings are sometimes cruel. And sometimes unkind to one another. Let's take for example children. They'll tease and push weak ones around. We come to their teens, teenagers, 
they press other teenagers with their evil ways. And for us adults, it's even worse. Because we are competing for attention, status, power, prestige. We belittle one another. We undermine one another. We damage one another's reputations. But you know, if you are truly a Christian, living a Christian faith, you understand these things. And you come across people who do not agree with you. And these people might put you down sometimes for your faith and challenge your values. Sometimes in the face of resistance from some, you'll be rejected by others. And here in Jeremiah, our first reading, he gives us a model of how we are to live our lives as Christians. Jeremiah trusted in the Lord to deliver and save him. So we are to do the same. Trust in the Lord to deliver and save you, to protect you, to care for you. Because his hedge of fire is always around you, my dear brothers and sisters. God's words indeed are life itself to us. And with God's help, we can persevere and endure in this life that we live in. In our gospel, we are told Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John the Baptist had been baptizing earlier. Many came to him and they said, oh, John did not perform miracles here, but everything that John said about this man was true. And many believed there. However, they were the unbelieving Jews at Jerusalem. They were the priests. They were the elders who were not moved by Jesus' miracles or by his preaching. And they were determined not to receive him as their Messiah. So we are told again, once more, they picked up stones to stone him. My dear Christian friends, our Lord had done the Jews no injury. He was not a robber. He was not a murderer. He was not a rebel. He believed in the law and he followed the law of the land. He was the one whose whole life was love and who went about doing good. There was no fault in him. There was no crime that can be laid against Jesus Christ. Yet, they planned to do him harm. You know, we Christians, my dear Christian friends, must not be surprised if they meted out such to Jesus Christ, our Lord, the same treatment can be meted out to us Christians who stand by our values, who stand by principles, who will not want to go the way of the world. In fact, the more we are like our master, the more holy, the more spiritual we are, the more probable it is that we endure hatred and persecution. But you know, it is not the Christian's fault when he lives a life of holiness. It is God's grace upon the life of the Christian. So when these things come to you, Understand that it is God's grace upon you that is helping you live a righteous and holy life. So you're being persecuted. Has not got, it, got anything to do with your behavior. It's God's grace upon your life. So all forms of enmity of men will come forth upon you. Because the world hates to see anything which is of God's image. So the more we become, we come to God's image, the more people see us as odd. You know, the children of the world, my dear brothers and sisters, are angered, not by anything, but by their own consciences. Their consciences are pierced when they see people who live lives which are better than them. And many a time, they want to be like you. Unfortunately, they cannot be because they don't have Jesus Christ in them. 
They don't have the Holy Spirit transforming and renewing them and helping them to live a righteous life. Why did Cain hate his brother Abel and slay him? Scripture tells us because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. So the world hates you because the world's work and values are evil and your life is righteous. Why did the Jews hate Jesus Christ? He exposed their sins and false doctrines. And they knew in their own hearts that he was right and they were wrong. Jesus says in John chapter 7 verse 7, the world hates me because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. So when you speak out against the world and what happens in the world, the world will hate you. But I tell you, it is the grace of God upon you. So Christians, we must make up our minds that we will drink the cup that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ drank when we live righteous and holy lives. But God is with us as he was with our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not be surprised. There is one in heaven who said, if the world hates me, you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Let us remember this and let us take courage that God is with us to build a wall of fire around us to protect us and to see us through. The time really is short. Jesus will come again. We are traveling towards the end of the day when everything will be set right and every man shall receive according to his works. Every man shall receive according to his works. And there will be no end to our expectation. Those of us who live righteous will be happy thereof. Finally, my dear Christian friends, our Lord Jesus Christ attaches importance to his miracles because he used them as the best evidence of his divine mission. So he asks the Jews to look at his works and deny them if they can. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. But if I do, Though you believe me not, believe the works. What is Jesus trying to tell us? He's trying to tell us that action speaks louder than words. And when we go, let us read James chapter 2, verse 14 to 24. James 2, um, 14 to 24. Would you give us details about how important our works as Christians are? Not our faith alone, but our works as Christians. There's a story told of an old lady who was dying. For 50 years, she's been doing the work of God. And been doing volunteering work in the community. For people who are so needy. And her pastor of many years visited her at her bedside. And she expressed some little fear about whether she had really worked for Jesus Christ. And she asked the pastor, what will I tell the master when I meet him? The pastor calmly replied, when you meet the master, don't tell him anything. Just show him your hands. When you meet the master, don't tell him anything. Just show him your hands. Action speaks louder than our words. And God, I'm very sure, my dear Christian friends, is more impressed by the work of our hands than the sound of our voice. 
God's voice is heard most clearly, not in the sounds from heaven, but in the fullness of creation. Cast your eyes around and you see the works of God. We're going to have our Eucharist and the Eucharistic prayer. We begin, Father, you are holy indeed. And when we say holy indeed, we expressly mean that the way we act, the way we live, shows a stronger faith. Indeed. So our Father is holy in his deeds. So we need to be holy in our deeds. Today, I pray that we will ask God for grace. Sometimes to forget words and to be holy indeed. For indeed, action speaks louder than words. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us turn to a time of prayer. Let us pray and thank God for his love and for his mercy. That is what we need to do every day we wake. For his protection. And let us ask for grace to always worship him in truth and in deed. In this time of Lent and as our Lenten season comes to a close, let us pray that you and I will grow closer to our God through the time that we've been spending in prayer, in fasting, in alms given, in reading his word, and in following the example of Jesus Christ. So we appreciate that spiritual things are far, far more important to us than this world that we live in. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray, my dear Christian friends, for God to grant us grace that we trust and rely wholly on him because it is he who protects us. It is he who cares for us. And let us pray that his word will richly indwell in us so that in our interaction with the world, our Christian faith, our values, our principles will stand out. I will not care and bother about the enmity that the world will show us. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all men and women in authority, especially in this our nation, Ghana. Let us pray that they work for peace, they work for justice, they work for tolerance, understanding, that they will respond to the poor, the helpless, the marginalized in society. Let us pray that God's Holy Spirit will be upon the president. That with grave discernment, he will work the works of God for the good of the people of this land. Let us pray for a successful annual general meeting coming Sunday and the election of new councillors. 
let us pray that God's Spirit Himself will lead the new counselors to lead this church. Spiritually, materially, physically. And that the will of God will be done through them. We'll pray for frontline staff. People are managing this COVID pandemic. It seems as if because we are taking the first jab, we're not thinking that it is still a pandemic. And that people are risking their lives for sick people. Let us pray that God will protect them. And grant them the love for the job that they're doing. Let us pray that the world will still take wisdom from what has assailed us and turn to God. Let us pray for all who have asked us to pray for them, my dear Christian friends. Let's pray for the sick. We know them by name. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for the poor and lonely. Let's pray for refugees. Let's pray for prisoners. Let us remember all those celebrating birthdays, thanksgivings, and anniversaries. For God's favor and grace to be showered upon them. Finally, let us pray for ourselves. Whatever our challenges, whatever our joys, whatever our sadness, whatever our hopes, let us tell God about them. And especially let us ask him to help us know him better and have a right to walk with him. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you and we bless you that in Jesus Christ you hear prayer. Praise, glory, honor, majesty, power, and might be unto you now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Please humble your heads and ask for God's blessings. Lord, send your light upon your family. May they continue to enjoy your favor and devote themselves to doing good and be holy. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you this day throughout the weekend and always. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, the Mass or the Friday or the fifth Sunday of Lent is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Our recessional hymn is supplementary 12. Supplementary 12.